Hey everyone, this is Mike from Dangerous Music. Today we're going to take a look at the different jumpers that are available inside of the source. The first set of jumpers adjusts the input sensitivity for analog input 2. The second pair of jumpers adjusts the overall output level of the speaker outputs. The first thing you want to do when going inside any piece of gear is power it down. The proper way to do that is to always unplug the end from the wall first before unplugging from the gear itself. So once the source is safely unplugged, all you'll need is a Phillips head screwdriver to unscrew the eight screws that hold the rubber feet and the chassis cover to the source. So the next step is to slide the chassis cover off. One way to do this is to hold the chassis cover with your hands, place your thumbs on the back of the source, and push with your thumbs to slide the cover. Take a look at the insides of your source. Go ahead, you could stare at it for a while. Nobody's going to judge you for it. Take a look back by analog input 2. You'll notice that there's two jumpers labeled JP1 and JP2. Those are the jumpers that are going to adjust the input sensitivity of analog input 2. By default, when the jumpers are on, that input is set to a sensitivity of negative 16 dBV. This is because most people are going to use that input for an iPhone or other similar type device. And we wanted to compensate for the average output levels of those devices. But if you're using a regular consumer line level device and you're clipping the input, you can adjust the input to negative 10 dBV by removing these jumpers. So to do so, just very carefully remove each jumper. And for safekeeping, you can put the jumper on just one of the pins so that you don't lose it. The other two jumpers are near the front of the source by the speaker level knob. These are labeled JP3 and JP4. If you need more output level, you can remove these two jumpers and get 60B of extra gain. To do so, just like we did with 1 and 2, just very carefully remove them and put them on one of the pins for safekeeping. I have my iPod plugged into analog input 2, and I'm going to show you in real time how removing jumpers 1 and 2 will drop the level by 60B, but please don't try this at home. Always remember to have your source powered down before doing anything like this. If you mess with the insides of a piece of gear while you have it powered up, you run the risk of hurting yourself, or even worse, hurting your gear. So just like we did with jumpers 1 and 2, I'm going to show you in real time how removing jumpers 3 and 4 will give you a 60B increase in output level. There's one other jumper that you might notice and is here on the USB board. This jumper is only used for testing and should never be touched. Once you've adjusted the appropriate jumpers, just slide the chassis cover back on so that you can put it all back together. In the event that you can't get the chassis cover to sit over the lip of the faceplate, all you gotta do is stick a credit card in the middle and snap each side shut. Now all we have left to do is flip it over and start screwing. So those are the different sets of jumpers inside the source and how to access and remove them. Now plug in and go make some music. 